Welcome to number four's camera. First, we're going to talk about optimizing motion detection for recording. Yes. And you know who's fast? The Flash. The Flash is fast. As a matter of fact, he's so fast, he doesn't get recorded there at the top. And you notice at the bottom, he's a little bit slower. So the problem is, in order to detect everything and record everything, you've got to adjust some settings. It's easy to do. You just change these sensitivity settings, or you change this so that lower amounts of motion trigger recording. You can also turn on this highlight motion rectangles and interestingly you know it helps you discover problems like this uh, outdoor shadows get detected as objects in motion the problem though is you fix all the recording stuff and then if you're getting alerts off that then it it, it really gives you too many emails too many alerts and yes. the overview of this problem is you have one yes. set of motion detection logic that's controlling both alerting and recording so you only have one knob you can change basically yes. Only one set of settings, unless you make a copy, which you can do with an IP-based camera system. So you just copy it, and then you have two knobs. You have one virtual camera that's responsible for recording, the other is responsible for alerts. It's the same physical camera, just two virtual cameras. I have a camera that records all the time, very liberal settings. Why are those green blankets? It's not a green screen, it's just I just paste it on top. But anyway, and then another camera that just handles the alerts. And so you can adjust and optimize the settings for each particular uh, thing. All right, this is how you copy a camera. You export the camera, you rename it, you import it, and then finally you click this hide button to yep. hide it off the main desktop. So that's... Press this button right there. Yeah, well... If, if you're having trouble, just like if there's a problem with your computer, just fix it. Okay, that's a good advice. Yep. Another tip is pre-buffering. Pre-buffering? Yes. If you see that car go by, you'll notice that the red square doesn't appear until it's mm. way past that mailbox. It takes it a while for the car to be detected. And so, if you pre-buffer a few frames, you, yeah, see it hadn't even started recording there. But if we back it up and review the recording, you'll see I have it pre-buffered, so it actually detects it well before that tree. So, it does say that it uses up some extra... Back in this tree in, like, the, yeah. the front. Yeah. With car cameras, if you have several cameras uh, watching a car go by, you can have one trigger the other two so that you'll, you're guaranteed to see the car. So, how you do that is you go to each camera and you say, hey, I'm in this group. I'm in the cars group. And then you go to the camera, maybe the ones on either end, that you want to trigger the group and you'd say hey I want this camera being triggered to trigger the entire group and uh, that's a little tip and it also doesn't use extra CPU usage like uh, buffering those frames now we're on to problem number two making your alerts work better alerts look better work better not look better work better work better but it will be like you know if you have too many alerts it's gonna be like a you car alarm that tree out. yes it's gonna be like a car alarm you ignore alright so the obvious thing here use a mask to help with the wind with yeah. wind, uh, however, keep in mind in, in winter the tree's you're collapsing. Yeah, it's full of ice, so your mask is invalid there. You can also throttle your alerts, which in this case, you know, if something's yeah. in front of the camera, like that spider, you, you only want to get an alert every so often. Spider. This is creating a virtual doorbell, so when the flash comes up here, it rings the doorbell. And the doorbell. The cat also rings the doorbell at 2.30 in the morning, which is not really that useful. So how do we get around that? Long. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't stay long. He visits multiple times a night, but you don't want your doorbell going off and waking you up. So you handle that with profiles, which are time-specific settings. So every setting on the screen, including the mask... That cat keeps visiting us. He does. ...can be set associated with a profile. So if I switch to that blue bar at yes. the top, it's green or blue. Each profile is a color. You, each profile can have its, it's own set of... It's almost over that, guys. ...his own set of settings. Just wait. <laughs> Here's the calendar. You, you, you say... It's like when, a football field. <laughs> yeah, it does. But you can say which, which uh, profile which is active base. on which dates and times. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, a cell phone detection program for filtering alert emails. This is a custom script that checks your wireless router for your cell phone's MAC address. So the idea is if you're at home, you don't want emails being sent to you because, you know, you're there. You don't want email. But if you're away and we don't find your cell phone on the wireless routers uh, page, which, uh, and this is accomplished in Blue Iris by executing a script. Uh, you, you, so, so I send out the emails rather than Blue Iris sends out the emails. And from a developer point of view, you know, they'll pass you a parameter with the camera name. You can, uh, you know, there's some code that I'm using to uh, yes. check the wireless router for MAC addresses or something. But anyway, it's real easy. Blue Iris has a web server. You can get video and, and Don't pictures off of it. Don't mess up kids. Just wait. It's easy to do this coding. Um, you just uh, parse this HTML off your router and get the MAC address. If you find the MAC address, you assume you're home. See you next time for another video on YouTube. And there's me running over. Okay, the end.